When balancing formula equations, I always like to do an atom inventory where I count the number and type of atoms on either side of the equation, the reactants and the products. So let's start out here. I have one iron on this side. There are two hydrogens. There is one oxygen. On the product side, let's see, there are three irons. I'm going to keep them in the same order. Two hydrogen, even though oxygen appeared next, I keep them in the same order as the reactant side, just so that it's one less thing my brain has to keep track of. And let's see, there are four oxygen. Okay, so in looking at this, if I put a coefficient of three in front of the iron, I'll have the same number of irons on each. And the only thing I can do is add coefficients. Now, the common factor of 1 and 3 was 3. Okay, so that is now balanced. Let's see, 2 hydrogen, 2 hydrogen is fine. With the oxygen, I have 1 and I have 4. So, to get 4 oxygens on this side, I must put the coefficient of 4 in front of the water, which is going to now make my oxygens 4. But at the same time, now for the hydrogens, I have 8. Because you must multiply this 2 times 4. That coefficient applies to everything in that formula. And so my hydrogen is now 8 on this side. I can easily fix that by putting a coefficient of 4 in front of the hydrogen, making 8. So 3 irons, 8 hydrogen, 4 oxygen on each side. That's balanced. I just noticed that all of these balancing formulas, for whatever reason, they end up being number 12. When I copy and paste them, I have no idea why. Just deal with it. They're not number 12, but I don't know what happened. I can't get rid of it, so deal with it. Okay, atom inventory. Let's take a look. Let's see. We On this side, we have one aluminum. We have three bromines. There are two potassiums one sulfur, and four oxygens. Um, one thing I tend to do is the polyatomics. You notice that sulfate exists on both sides. I have sulfate here and potassium sulfate, and then there's aluminum sulfate. Uh, sulfate is on both sides. Students will ask, you know, can you put sulfate down instead of separating it as sulfur and oxygen? Well, the answer is yes and no. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. It depends on if the polyatomic ion exists on both sides and if any of the elements that are in it are not being taken off and put into new compounds on the opposite side. Um, I tend to like to separate them out, but I guess you can do what you want. I mean, it's up to you. And so, let's see, we have the uh, atom inventory for the reactants. Let's look at the products. Aluminum's over here. I have two. Bromine, it looks like there is one. Potassium, it appears to be one. Sulfur, there are three. And then oxygen, there are twelve. Three times four, that's twelve oxygen. All right, let's take a look here. Aluminum's, if I put a two here, my number of aluminum increases here to 2, and now my bromine, 2 times 3, goes up to 6. Alright, um, how am I going to balance the bromine? Well, if I put a coefficient of 6 here, that's going to increase my potassium to 6, and also my bromine. Oops, this is a 6. Alright, let's look here. Potassium I have now 2 and 6, so if I put a coefficient of 3 in front of the potassium sulfate, that's going to make potassium 6. Let's see, sulfur is now 3, and then oxygen 3 times 4, 12. Lo and behold, uh, we balanced everything there with that last one, so 2 aluminums on both sides, 6 bromines, six potassiums, three sulfurs, twelve oxygens. Okay, atom inventory. I have one phosphorus, two oxygens. Over here I have two phosphorus, and I have five oxygens. Um, 
normally, you know, I start with the first element, but there are instances that I choose not to. This would be one of the cases because you'll notice over here I have one phosphorus kind of all left by itself and it's really easy to balance anything that is located by itself because no matter how many phosphorus I end up with over here, I can put that number in front of the phosphorus and it's balanced. So that's just one little tip. Uh, this one it really wouldn't have mattered too, too much because this is fairly easy. But when they get more complex, it's a good idea if you have an element that's all by itself, balance it last. I'm going to go ahead and skip that one. Let's look at oxygen. Two and five common factors, ten. So if I put a 5 here, this becomes 10 oxygen. I would have to put a coefficient of 2 there. This is 10 oxygen. And now phosphorus increased to 4. Easily I can fix that, put a 4 there, and we are balanced. Okay, in this example, there's one carbon, two oxygens over here. There's one carbon, one oxygen. So if I put a 2 in front of here, these both become 2 and put a 2 in front of the carbon, balanced. Okay, atom inventory, 2 coppers, 1 sulfur, 2 oxygen. Over here I have 1 copper, I have 1 sulfur, and then as far as the oxygen goes, I have 1 here and 2 here, so 2 plus 1, total of 3. All right. Um, let's see, if I put a 2 here in front of this copper, this becomes 2. Uh, the oxygen I have 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 2. I now have 4 over here. Uh, I can readily fix that by placing a 2 in front of the O2. This becomes 4, 2 coppers, 1 sulfur, 4 oxygen, balanced. Okay, let's do our atom inventory. There's one nitrogen, there are three hydrogens and two oxygens on this side. On the product side, there is one nitrogen, two hydrogens, and three oxygen. Okay, let's see. Nitrogen's fine. Let's look at hydrogen. I have three and I have two. Common factor is going to be six. So if I place a two here, this becomes two. This becomes six. Let's see, I would have to put a three over here. Hydrogen is six. And then oxygen, I have 3 plus 2 is now 5. Uh, now the nitrogen number is upset. If I place a 2 here, nitrogen becomes 2. Oxygen, I have 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3. I now have 7. Uh, Houston, we've got a problem. If you look at this, on the product side, I have 7 oxygens at this time. The only oxygen I have on the reactant side is diatomic. So that means any numeral that I place here, any number times 2, the result is going to be an even number. This number is decidedly odd. How am I going to do this? Well, there is a number that times 2 is 7. That number is 3 and a half. Okay, the only problem is, is I cannot have halves. Halves aren't cool. Oxygen is diatomic. It's found in molecules with two of them. So you can't have a half. How do I get rid of a half? Easy. You multiply it by two. And so this three and a half becomes seven. But if you multiply one thing by two, you've got to increase everything by two. So that two becomes four. I've got to double this two to four, and this three becomes six. So if you look at it now, on this side there are four nitrogens, there are four nitrogens there. Hydrogen, four times three is twelve, six times two, twelve. Oxygen, here are fourteen. Okay, two times four is eight, plus six, fourteen. That's your balanced formula equation.